everyone. Once bitten here at the Battle Report. So it's been a while, uh, lots of different reasons. I've actually played some games recently, just haven't been making Battle Reports of them. So in the near future, Grail Quest is going to be happening. That's an annual GT that um, it's kind of made a name for itself because it it's designed to promote uh, mo extra monsters in your list. And because of that, it's it's my favorite one. It's it's a tournament where I've taken my old Back in Warhammer days, I'd take Bretonia, and they would have a, a giant, and I thought that was so cool. So I decided that for this year's Grail Quest, I was going to try to make the ultimate monster mash list, because in a 5,000-point game, which this is, uh, in the current iteration of rules for Ninth Age, the Beast Herds can take a lot of stuff. And then with the special rules for this tournament, we can take even more stuff. So... Uh, tell you what, let me um, go over the special rules for list building in this slide. The next slide I'll talk about this particular scenario. So basically you can have up to 11% of the, of your army in monsters from any book in the game. Uh, an extra 11%. So in my regular list I can bring three Gortak, an Ambushing Giant, and a Jabberwock. And that's before, <laughs> that's what they call it. That's before the extra monsters. <laughs> <laughs> and then this also has a thing where your character um, characters can use monsters from any other book. Not your own book, interestingly, but from any other book as a mount. And if you do that, then that unit, that character on the mount, counts as scoring, which is interesting. So, yeah. Now, I think the rules pack changed uh, between the time I threw this list together and uh, this tournament. So... Basically, in every game, you get certain bonus points, um, you know, like like keeping your opponent out of your deployment zone, being in your, in your opponent's deployment zone, not being broken, um, as per the old fortitude rules. And knowing that, I, my list is kind of flawed because um, I don't have enough scoring units in it. Anyway, I'll cover my list in a minute. So in this scenario, there's a token in the middle of the table. Diagonal deployment, obviously. That token is Weapon Skill 1, Toughness 6, Infinite Amount of Wounds. Um, you can damage it any way you want, but after combat, everybody bounces off an inch. So nobody stays in contact with that thing. Whoever does more wounds to it by the end of the game gets a thousand victory points. So it's, I mean, it, it's huge. Um, so the question is, you know, but the problem is when you hit it and you bounce off an inch, a lot of times you're kind of in a bad spot. Uh, so, yeah, there's a couple ways to approach that scenario. Uh, everything I've said so far about the scenario I think is kind of fun. The next part I can't stand. But basically at the beginning of every turn, every every unit within six inches of that token gets a random pyromancy spell cast on it. And I think uh, spell four... Uh, is impossible to cast, in which case you put the the trait spell instead. So it really bogs down the game. Every unit within six inches, and when you have all these units attacking it, trying to, to kill stuff, or trying to get wounds on it, there's so many units and so many spells, and how do you keep track of all these pyromancy spells everywhere, and when it was cast. If, it's, if it gets cast on my turn, it lasts through my turn and my opponent's turn, but maybe it gets cast again on his turn, and oh gosh. <laughs> Anyway, there's that. So let's go through the list. My opponent is playing Beast, bless his soul, and he loves Minotaurs. I can't fault him for that. So he's got three units of eight Minotaurs. So here's unit number one. This one has the flaming, the, the banner gives it flaming, which is important because he knows that my generals is protected primarily through regen. Behind it, it's got a unit of gargoyles. Way behind it is a unit of mongrel raiders in the woods. Um... There's a Razor Tusk, another unit of Gargoyles, a second unit of eight Minotaurs. This one has two characters in it. Um, I'm going to go back one. Yeah, I'm a little bit confused how the modeling is working. Anyway, um, he's got his General and his Battle Standard Bearer. And uh, let's see, they're both, you can see their kit, but basically... They're really unprotected. They have great weapons and really no no armor to speak of. The only protection at all is this general has the bluffers home. So tough toughness five hand reroll to wound is something, but for the most part I consider them fairly fragile. Um and this and then this picture is the third unit of Minotaurs. Um 
just as you can see, they all have extra hand weapons. To the left of that is a unit of wild horns, and in there he's got a a wizard master. I think he's and he's got lore of the path of shamanism, and I don't remember how many spells he has. And then there's two more units of Mongol raiders behind him. So <clears throat> my thinking is against this list, those those units of eight minotaurs are kind of a tough nut to crack, just because they they put out so many wounds, but if you can just just you just redirect them and then get a flank charge and make sure you can beat them then even though even the flank they'll have 10 attacks his general has a the crown of scorn so these guys automatically pass primal instinct if they're within 12 inches of them so 10 attacks reroll into hit so even in the flank they're you know not easy so i've got my little jabberwocky down here then a regular chariot and then one of my favorite conversions I've ever done is my Beast Lord on a Razor Tusk Chariot. And so the, the it's being pulled by a mod, the model is a Minotaur pulling it. And he's actually wielding the chariot like a club with the Beast Lord and the Wild Horn just leaping off it into the fray. I love that model. <laughs> Not to pat myself on the back too much. Then I've got a Razor Tusk. Then I've got my big baddies. So I need to name these guys. I'm open to suggestions. Uh, so there's Gortak number one. The second model is the old Shagoth model, which I just love, and I've been painting this one, and he's maybe 70% done being painted, and I'm going to put him on a, a um, 50 by 100 base, and he's going to be Gortak number two. And the only problem is he is so small compared to the other Gortaks. I mean, look at him. He's like a little baby out there. And that guy used to be like the, the, big, the big baddie on the block. Ooh, that might be his name. Anyway, that's Gortak number two. Then I've got well, so what this is, is my Chieftain BSB riding on top of an Alpha Carnosaur. I just don't have that model. I don't see this being in my final tournament list, so I, I didn't care too much about it. So that is what it is. And then I've got Gortak number three, and then another Razor Tusk. And then way off here to the left, there is my Centaur Chieftain with, of course, the Impaler. I always run him sober, let him Vanguard. I almost always run him sober, let him Vanguard. Try to get into flanks and start throwing that, that bolt thrower around. So it looks like that. I deployed first, so I'm going to have um, the, the, you know, I, I know I'm going to go first. And by the way, I have two two units of ambushing wild horns and an ambushing giant. So I, I made several important mistakes in this game, which is fine. When I get these practice games, especially, I don't mind playing around, doing things that are probably a mistake, just as see how things pan out. I, I just, I'm trying to play around so they get the tournament. Hopefully um, I have a good sense of how the army works and I don't make the mistakes. Um, so what I decided to do the first turn was to go ahead and throw three, my, my um, Alpha Carnosaur and two of the Gortak into that, uh, the, the, the whatever it is in the middle and just try to get a bunch of wounds on it. Again, that's a thousand victory points. That's just a lot of stuff. I can if this play um, ends up costing me a Gortak or even two, I still come out on top um, with a thousand points. So my thinking was I could use my Razor Tusk to redirect two units of his Minotaurs. And then the third unit, um, I just need to be able to set up counter charges and hope that uh, it works. <laughs> it's good enough to handle that one unit. So anyway, it looks like that. Uh, let's see, Gortak number one down here by my sword. He actually tried charging the um, the his razor tusk. I love that idea. I could hit it. I easily would kill it, overrun, and um, and hit a unit of gargoyles. Not only killing them on his turn, but then being able to. Oh, I guess I'd have to overrun after after that point, but. I didn't feel like I really needed him back here. I think I needed a 10, and I really wasn't that concerned about failing it. So I fail it. He is where he is. So the big drawback in this plan is um, his unit of Minotaurs with his general can still charge this Gortak that's attacking the thing in the middle. And um, I think they easily kill him. They And then it's not a difficult overrun to my second Gortak. I would get a counter charge with two chariots, one be my general. And at that point, I think it's just dicey. So I don't think it was the best plan, giving up one Gortak and then giving him an easy overrun to the second one. So, yeah, 
what I should have done is what I did on the left, get my BSB uh, Alpha Carnosaur charge, and it does some wounds, but it can't really be countercharged otherwise. So just being super aggressive there. And after combat, I end up doing 13 wounds to the thing. So my opponent, right off the bat, my opponent's going to have kind of a hard time um, doing that, getting more wounds than that, and he can't afford just to charge it and allow me to ch counter charge with everything. So my units back, bounce back an inch, and it looks like you can see it. So his uh, general's unit can charge Gortak on the left, in which case he'll easy kill him. He'll have to overrun, and then my Alpha Carnosaur can charge his flank, which isn't ideal for him. Uh, he can charge my Gortak on the right, uh, like I said before, and I think that's his best option. I think I just really didn't set that up well. So we go to the bottom of turn one. Um, Minotaurs on the right charge my uh, Razor Tusk, and I think that's a good call because I don't have a good counter charge set up. I've got my Jabberwock on the right that can counter that charge him in the flank. Um, I don't think that's a good play for me. He has 10 attacks, automatically rerolling to hit. <clears throat> Strength 5, Toughness 5. I think he kills me, and if he doesn't kill me, I, I don't think with my 4 attacks and a charge in the flank, I'm going to do much to that unit. So, I think that's a good call on his part. I think where he made a mistake, in my opinion, is he flew a unit of gargoyles down to redirect my um, Gortak and my general. What he's doing, in essence, though, is he's keeping his general's unit from being able to overrun into my Gortak and automatically hit him. And then on my turn, I can charge those gargoyles and and hit one of those two Minotaur units. So I think that was kind of a mistake on his part. Um, now I knew going into it that when he when he charged my guy, he um, he wouldn't be able to maximize because of that model that's there. So he's still getting his general has a great weapon, so he'll have five plus three plus three, so eleven attacks, rerolling to hit, strength five, toughness six. Um, my thinking is he doesn't kill my guy. I throw all my attacks into his general, so his general can't attack. But his general gets to attack with that great weapon, he's probably going to kill me. Otherwise, we'll all just be there and fight another round of combat. And by the way, the wound on my guy is there because of a stupid pyromancy spell. There's that. Four. So I think pyromancy spell does one wound on, my, on this core attack, and then... Um, he casts a spell it's like the 5d6 strength 1 and does 3 wounds on him. So that was <clears throat> unanticipated. And in the process he misfires and that spell goes away and he kills a few of his guys. And after combat it looks like that. So uh, Minotaurs on the right uh, get a big overrun. So what I can do there is I can charge with my Gortak in the very top left picture and hit their flank. Now the problem is I wasn't expecting to have four wounds on the guy. <clears throat> so I love him charging. I won't be able to close the door. He'll have to close the door to me. Um, he'll only have one guy fighting me. That's five attacks, three rolling to hit, strength five, toughness six. Um, if I have, if I'm have anywhere close to full wounds on me, uh, I'm winning that and he's just in a load of trouble. Having four wounds on me I think odds are he gets a couple wounds and I die. And I decide just to go for it. I might be able to to um, get an initiative buff on him so I get to swing first. Maybe I roll a six, and why not? Uh, otherwise, the way things work now, uh, my general if charges the gargoyles. He'll uh, have to overrun into the right minotaur unit. And the, gar the gore attack on the left goes solo into the other minotaur unit, and that's kind of bad. For my opponent... The bad downside is, once the next turn starts, we give pyromancy spells for every freaking unit within six inches, and his gargoyles get hit with a fireball. So we go to the top of turn two, and things are getting bloody in a hurry. <clears throat> let's see. Uh, let's see. Overall, it's like that. My ambushing units I weren't on when I took this picture because I forgot about them until later. Um, I charge these guys. My plan here is I think I'll win. Um, I don't plan on doing this combat until after the Gortak Minotaur combat, because if I need to, I'll overrun and hit the Minotaur combat, fight it on his turn, lose my chariot, but at least they can't just reform and charge something on, you know, after this turn. Uh, this guy knows really dicey, only has two wounds left. If I go first, I have a chance of rolling six, that might help, otherwise I need him not. Five attacks, re-rolling to hit, let's say he gets four hits, odds are he gets two wounds, and I die. 
Uh, so I just need to get lucky. It's not be, trying, hoping for luck is not a good game plan. And because one of his gargoyles uh, died, and because he pulled him off the other side, or maybe two died, and he had to pull him off from either side, um, I'm able to charge in a way that I can overrun both into his general's unit. And I'm. I like how that would work. Centaur Chieftain charges the flank of this unit. Um, yeah, because of the path attribute for the the path of shamanism, uh, I'm actually hitting this, his spellcaster on a five. So uh, that's not good. Uh, but nevertheless, I've got a charge down a hill, flank. Um, you know, I'm going to win. He'll be steadfast, but he's like steadfast on a 7 or 8. If I kill this character, he's steadfast on a 7. I don't see him wounding my guy, so I'm comfortable with that. If you look at the top left, you can see ambushing wild horns, top right, ambushing iron horns, long horns, or I'm sorry, wild horns, top middle, ambushing giant. So uh, very, very comfortable with how all that's shaping up. And I take my uh, Jabberwock, you look at the middle right, and he charges a razor test, just because I didn't have anything better to do with him. He's still within six unit, <coughs> six in inches of the units I need him to be at. Um, so, comfortable with that decision. There's some ambushers. Ambushers. So, let's see. Yeah, his Minotaur kills my gore attack, which is unfortunate, but then the way things were, he couldn't really um, reform very well. So, uh, I just left my chariot where it is. So he can charge my chariot, but he can't charge past my chariot and hit the my, my beast lord. Now, I think he, he normally could, but my beast lord would have to close the door to him. My beast lord's already in cam combat, so that's not an issue. We go to combat. The beast lord issues a challenge. My opponent declines, so I make his BSB worthless, so he does not get a reroll. <clears throat> um, I, th I don't remember where I threw my attacks, but I won combat by a bunch. I won combat by a whole bunch. Um, my uh, my memory's fading. There's one point in this game, I think when he killed my first gore attack, my gore attack um, put all his attacks to the general and just couldn't kill him, but got him down to like one wound left. And now I easily kill the general, um, just do a bunch of wounds overall. I've just won tom combat by an absolute ton, just because he didn't do any wounds to my general. So my general has a one-up, basically toughness five, you have to reroll wounds. Then I've got a one-up armor save, then I have regen. And so he couldn't do anything to my general. Uh, he did, he think he did one wound to my gore attack. He kind of just fluffed those. His general didn't get to attack. His BSB didn't get, his two great weapon characters couldn't attack. He just fluffed everything. I did, a, I did a boatload of wounds. I had him down to where if the... If the Jabberwock was within six inches, he was originally, but after he lost models, he was no longer within six inches. If he was, he was on auto break. As it was, he needed snake eyes. And damn it all, he, he rolled snake eyes on that unit. <laughs> damn it. <laughs> Are you freaking kidding me? Darn it. Um, yeah, the uh, Centaur Chieftain took a wound, but he still won. The uh, unit was steadfast on a seven, and they failed it. And he got him. We go to the bottom of turn two. It's only the bottom of turn two. This is so bloody. His his uh, Mongol Raiders have nothing to do. I think he set him up in the back just to shoot arrows at that thing in the middle, just to try to get some wounds on it. And then it just didn't matter. My guys, it just wasn't going to do it. He wasn't going to do 13 wounds to it that way. I think he would have been better off putting those guys at the forefront and having and treating them like chaff, to be honest. Minotaurs on the right charge my chariot. He's going to easily kill that thing, but they have to overrun. And they're not going to be in a good place. Uh, top left, uh, his Minotaur is charged with the Razor Tusk. Um, when he overruns, my Giant will be able to charge their flank. I just don't know if I want to do that. And down here, we just continue the fight. But now that he didn't get the charge, I'm much more confident in doing well here. After combat, yeah, the Minotaurs are at the edge of the table. They, they kill my chariot, they go all the way to the edge of the table. And over here he kills uh, the Razor Tusk. And, yeah, I don't want to charge him with my, my giant. He don't see my giant, but he can see him. Okay, so I, I totally messed up. The last time, whatever happened in that combat, we won, but it wasn't a big deal. This is the combat where we won by an absolute ton, and he was on Snake Eyes. I don't know, one of them he did. Anyway, he st I, I 
beat the snot out of him again, and he stuck around again. So we go to top of turn three. At this point, I take the Jabberwock into the thing in the middle because there's nothing else for him to do. Uh, I would just want him six inches in front of that unit. Um, yeah, my, my ambushing units are both charging units of, of mongrels. My centaur chieftain's charging unit of mongrels. I'm ignoring his two big minotaur buses because I just don't need those points at this at this stage. His razor tusk is alive, has one wound left. My Jabberwock did not pursue him. There's that. That's after the previous combat. Uh, he had one gar unit of gargoyles chaffing up my um, alpha carnosaur, and that's fine. I don't. I mean, he kept him from charging in the minotaur fight. I just don't think I need him in the minotaur fight. And afterwards, yeah, both of his characters are dead. We overrun, catch the unit. Yeah, my opponent's just in a bad way. At this, at this point, we look at the board, and I'm like, look, we can play as long as you want, but um, one, I can car I, I can make it to where I combo charge the heck out of your Minotaur unit, or I can make it to where he just they just don't find combat the rest of the game. Your Minotaur unit down at the bottom right, same thing. They're so far away. I'm up by a 1,000 points just by the thing in the middle, and, my, and we both were like, yeah, I mean, it's going to be a 20-nil victory. So uh, at this point, I... I I think it was just best all around just to stop the game. So, yeah, I wasn't. Uh, I th I don't. I think I was way too aggressive, um, uh, trying to get wounds on the on the thing in the middle. That uh, it really could have hurt me on the right hand side. I think it would have been much much better to quit being aggressive. I've noticed lately in a lot of my games I'm being way too aggressive turn one and turn two, which is just not the smart thing to do. But overall, a fun game. I love playing with this many monsters. <laughs> it's just stupid crazy. Although, I have to admit, I'm not really hugely fond of the Alpha uh, Carnosaur. I've seen other people use them to great effect. For me, I was afraid to throw them in against the Minotaurs uh, on anything. I just felt that, you know, Toughness 6 just doesn't quite cut it. And there's just no no armor or any other kind of save. And so what I might do, I'm thinking at this point, I might put my BSB on a, on a Hydra. Because I like the regen and um <clears throat> that way if i choose to keep them out of combat i'm not i don't have so many points invested in them and then use those extra points for something else anyway that's it thank you so much for watching the video i truly hope you enjoyed it as you know youtube has a variety of functions you can use to interact with videos such as this you can like or comment on the video you can favorite it you can share it and of course you can subscribe to the channel and i encourage you to do any or all of those things as uh, a way of interacting between viewer and producer. Uh, as always, I'm, I appreciate your patronage on the channel and wish you all the best.